Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Panmo TV. And welcome to this. A commentary on something that I hadn't expected and I hadn't heard about before. It's all to do with the Keshi, Keshi Foundation. Now, <clears throat> his name's Keshi apparently, I thought it was Keshi. Um, this is something I've been studying for a while. I mean, I looked into it. Um, there's, um, there's a guy called Maran Tavakoli Kesh and he is runs something called Kesh Foundation. It's based in the United States. He comes from Iran and um, he's this guy who's been talking a lot about having a free energy device. He's been on a couple of radio shows. I wrote to him asking if he'd do an interview on her Panmo radio but he never got back to me. But um, he's, he calls himself this. this is, I've got him on his LinkedIn page. He says um, he was born in Iran in 1958 um, and became uh, as introduced to the world of radiation and nuclear science at a young age because his his father was a radiographer, like at a hospital, that deals with X-ray. He went to Queen Mary College, University of London, and graduated in 1981 as, as a nuclear engineer, like Stan Friedman. He has spent the year since then completing a system for the production of gravity and energy using a radioactive hydrogen fueled reactor that is clean and safe. Um, now, first thing that makes me think about this is it sounds very like um, the Mayer engine, the Mayer cell, the guy who built the car around on water before he mysteriously died. Um, <clears throat> he says he has covered all aspects of the design of a new plasma nuclear system. Now, um, you see, I don't know, I'm not a physicist or anything, but he talks about the production of gravity. Oh, um, this is, this, but then he talks about hydrogen reactors. I don't know if you could actually get that from hydrogen reactions. I'm not sure. Um, he includes the design, the fuel, the testing, and practical applications. But fuel, I suppose he means water because um, I assume he means water because it's talking about hydrogen. Not hydrogen, uh, hydrogen is of course where we get from water mostly. Um, since 2002, he's concentrated on completing the full range of his technology for the launching into the scientific world and industry. In September 2004, he was invited by a leading Western country through its government office organisations to present his technology for evaluation. What Western country? I should have looked up more about this actually um, beforehand, but this is just, I only just found out about this. It's maybe because I've been away Exapol because um, I was MC of Exapol last weekend and then I was at Probe the weekend before so I've been sort of off the, I've been off the circuit a little bit um, in March 2005 yeah oh, here we go yeah um, from November 2004 to 2005 his technology was under consideration by scientists in a university in March 2005, the report from the university declared that energy production through his new technology was feasible. In April 2005, through government organisations, a commercial development partner was found to study the practicality of developing this system. Through government organisations, eh? Is these the same government organisations that weaponised the Hutchison effect to use it on 9-11? Um... By September 2005, the preliminary evaluation of the system was complete and all parties agreed that they were ready to proceed with the physical production of the first gravitational and energy system. European and international patents for the technology were applied for in early October 2005 for aspects of possible use for this new technology, covering hundreds of applications. <coughs> um, that's ten years ago. Anyway, he's, uh, he's an interesting chap, actually. I, I do, I've been reading... Through his website, and he is an interesting chap, and he seems. Um, um, let's have just let's have a look at some of it, some of the stuff on his website. And this is where you can find out more about him. The Kesh Foundation www.keshfoundation.org. Kesh spelled K-E-S-H-E. -E. Um, solutions for it says here: space technology, health, materials, energy, transportation, environment. Agriculture, nanotech, and ICT. It's all very interesting. It covers all that covers a wide area of subjects, but most of those are ones that I've talked about in my various um, videos to do with disclosure, and also my 
video Energy Politics and UFOs 2015. Now uh, there's uh, several images here uh, across the um, on the website, and you see here several pictures of um, looks like electronics, and there's a bottle of something looks like a bottle of milk. I'm not sure what that is, but it may be medicine. Then you have this face here, this person in a wood, and maybe that refers to environment. And I've explained before how um, this relates. I'll go into it in a bit more detail again in a minute. And there you have a car what looks like a car but it's actually got no wheels now that's interesting and here you have a, a sub, an object I don't know what that is and here this is the most interesting of all you have what looks like a scene in space as a, a galaxy maybe that's a black hole and there's a UFO that's interesting now of course um, as I explained in my video energy politics and UFOs if you get solutions for space technology um, you, boom, you cut this. It, that the implications for that are enormous. Um, space technology is like um, you. You don't need rockets anymore because it's obviously UFOs themselves are not using rockets. The UFOs have some have found some way of controlling gravity. This means if you can control gravity, the universe is is our oyster. We have the keys to the universe because you have a propulsion system which doesn't need fuel and you don't have to carry fuel with you and it doesn't cost anything and it's safe and it's clean and it means you don't need all this energy to get out into space. I mean most of the fuel carried by space rockets is simply to get it off the earth just just a couple of hundred miles away off the earth you need a, a rocket the size of a, a tall building to get yourself off the ground that weighs hundreds of tons and you only use it once and it's extremely dangerous if, they, if anything goes wrong usually there's a big boom and everyone dies I'm not sure where the health fits into this um, materials hmm. whether, whether free energy has a relation to materials energy obviously as I said you have free energy you don't need um, you don't need um, oil you don't need gas um, you can put a box in your house, it will heat your home for a hundred years, very low maintenance, no no bills. It would save people, it would save, it's extraordinary how many lives that would save. It would transform the world in ways that even I can't imagine. Transportation, obviously, anti-gravity cars, like this one here, without wheels, which is what I think it's supposed to be. Environment, well obviously, without oil or gas you don't have pollution, uh, with an infinite amount of energy, um, you can you can use water to irrigate farmland and that comes brings us on to agriculture the next segment you can use seawater to irrigate farmland by desalinating it get, taking the salt out of it and turning it into fresh water and then pumping it wherever you want for no money you could build have farms in the middle of the desert <coughs> nanotech and IT I'm not sure about but um, well, so far I mean like, this is this is very interesting stuff um, a lot of big a lot of big promises being made here so let's see how where it goes let's see what's next on this picture now that is one of the cars he talks he's talking about this is a Kesh car and as you see it's got no wheels so it's anti-gravity so it can fly it can float in the air it's even even an even an airplane can't do that I mean it's quite remarkable if that is true we've got a remarkable transportation system and that there is Dr. Kesh himself so, uh, well, I'm very interested in this. But anyway, it's all coming to a head today, apparently. Anyway, you can imagine what I thought when I came across this. Here, Tesla technology about to be given to all nations of the Earth in 10 days. <laughs> if you missed the historic live stream free energy announcement given Friday by the Keshe Foundation, this video is the Cliff Notes version. World leaders were given a 10-day heads up to what's coming the global release and distribution of patented plasma based free energy knowledge and technology into the public domain Mr. Kesh has just warned Spaceship Earth of yet another imminent world shattering event blimey when's this going to happen when's this is amazing um, could it be true well it turns out it's actually Monday it's gonna, this is going to happen Monday the 26th of October 2015 at 9 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time and that's actually in about five minutes from now.
believe it or not. It is Monday the 26th of October. It's now 5 to 9 a.m. So if you want to watch this, I suppose this will, if you're watching now, well, you may be able to follow this commentary. If you watch this recorded, then you can use my videos as sort of like a commentary. Because what I'll do is I'll watch this and, and do like a commentary, like my own impressions of it as it goes along. It's going to be on YouTube. It's, going to, it's called the K KFSSI. That stands for Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute Teaching Week. And it's starting in five minutes. Blimey, I'm excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> well, um, what could this? What could happen? I mean, is this is this it? Is it, are we actually going to see free energy given to the world? Because Nikola Tesla wanted to do this. Nikola Tesla says, "I want to give free energy to the world." And. Um, I'm not going to charge for it, I'm just going to do donate it to mankind in order to improve <coughs> life on Earth. And in 1943, when he died, um, his, his hotel room where he was staying at the time was sealed off. Even before the undertakers were allowed in to remove the body, the, uh, the FBI moved in, they sealed the door, they confiscated all his papers, all his books, everything he had in there. And what happened to those documents, we don't know, but they're, they're classified. Now I'll, talk, I'll probably talk more about this later, because, but right now you must understand that I'm sceptical with a C. Not with a K, with a C. I'm not a sceptic, I'm just sceptical about whether anything can actually come out of this. <coughs> now, um, I won't really watch much of this because I've got to go to work in an hour. Um, I've still got to do my job, even though we're about to get free energy. But I'll be back later and I'll pick it up from there, find out what's happened. Um, but I'm just I'm curious to find out what happens. I mean, I've watched live streams before. When the last live stream I watched was the bloody Roswell slides. Oh God! Check out my videos on that. Oh dear. Just two minutes to go now. Just two minutes to go before the world gets free energy. Whoa wee! I don't know about that. <laughs> um, you see, the Cash Foundation. I, I follow them on Facebook. And um, they say, um, this is interesting, um, if you read through what Kesh says on Facebook, it's quite interesting, he said, I had to come in the body of a man on this, this planet and live amongst you, the life of a man, to understand the way man has created his misery and so much injustice from the time of his creation for himself and his fellow men to obtain and hold to nothing but the mirage of nothingness, whatever that means, sort of a, isn't that a tautology? for his so-called life and its physical elusive possessions. Um, where we made all the universe available to him, who's we? To live in comfort and peace on this planet and amongst themselves in their time on the planet. And when they are mature intellectually and spiritually, for the tribe of man to join and unify with the rest of creation of the creator of the universe. <laughs> Killing and destruction of life has never been a part of our teachings. Whose teachings? Mm. To change the course of life from the man in this wrongful path, we have sent to you in so many ways, different forms. Uh. Today, and with this pen, I, as the Messiah, and whom took his time to be amongst you, to learn your shortfalls and false lives, for me to be able to understand your problems. I spent over 55 years with you, worked with you, in ways to help and guide you. I chose today to declare my position and status as the creator in the soul and the physical body of the man as I am and have chosen to be in, to be amongst you and call up all the men on this blue planet and the wild village of earth, to accept my call for peace and to change your wrongful path. Um, oh dear me. And it's signed, it goes on a bit longer. I won't read the whole thing. It says, Mehran, the Professor of Love. So he's kind of, he believes he's the Son of God. Is that is that what he's saying here? Oh dear, this is a bit dodgy. Son of God, eh? Oh, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see what happens anyway. 
okay well it's two minutes past nine and at the moment nothing's happening uh, it's, it says the stream is offline KF SSI blueprint teaching week so we'll see what happens um, it does say from Monday October the 26th the Keshi Foundation is live and open to public with teachings about understanding applications of the Magrav system the Magrav I presume is his technology what he calls it starting at 10 a.m. Central European time that's 9 a.m. my time lucky the clocks went back last night uh, Monday October the 26th on week all weekday mornings and at 2 p.m. weekday afternoons to Friday October the 30th same links below for all the sessions public everybody is welcome online live streaming at and it tells you it gives you some gives you some uh, pages you've got to go to but you can watch it on YouTube here on this uh, YouTube page as you can see um, so I'll just uh, do that I think and um, well, uh, let's do, we'll just have to see what happens, I think. But at the moment, nothing's happening. It's all quiet. Um, no one's saying anything. There's no pictures. So I'll let you know as soon as something happens. Okay, something's happening. I've got this uh, box here, which is starting soon. I'm sorry you can't hear this. I tried to get my, <coughs> my speakers to work, and I couldn't. But um, basically, if you go to if if you go to the YouTube channel on the Kesh Foundation Spaceship Institute YouTube channel, KF. SSI Blueprint Teaching Week, uh, you'll be able to watch this and I'll give you some time codes um, so you always know where you are and where uh, where I can, uh, where, you know, how you can follow me along. There's a chat box here, there's various people, quite a few people in it, um, um, and then it's all saying, let's go, oh my god, guys, what time does this begin? I'm so excited! Things like that. Um, where are we? Right. Someone's already accusing someone else of being a shill. That's what we kind of expect. Um, oh, Cash Foundation says hello, everybody. All right. I'll put here the government hasn't shut us down yet. Brackets. Just being realistic. Close bracket. So we are. <laughs> government hasn't shut us down yet. <clears throat> right, some pe some French people in there. Some people speaking in a couple of other languages. Um, now, um, it remains to be seen what happens. But I mean, if, are we about to see history being made? I'm not sure. I mean, it sounds um, the idea that he's Kesh is sort of like he doesn't seem to be conspiratorially aware. He says he's got scientists involved and Western governments. Well. It doesn't seem to have occurred to him that um, that's very often how the powers that be suppress free energy. Yeah. There's nothing in my earphones at the moment except music playing. Not I'll let you know if anything happens. They suppress free energy by first pretending to be on your side. This is what happened with Stanley Mayer, Eugene Maloff. They say, oh yes, well, Mr. Mr. Kesh, we're very, very interested in what you have to do. Um, I think we, you know, we can award you a development contract. You know, all you have to do is sign here. Uh, don't read the small print at the back. Just, uh, just sign this little bit here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kesh. Right, we'll, we'll be in touch. And then, of course, it's, it contains exclusivity clauses. It contains um, licensing. You know, licensing. They offer you a large amount of money. Very often, when, you, when someone places a big suitcase full of cash in your hand, it's very good at blinding your reason. A lot of these inventors, people like Malov, like Mayer. John Hutchison, probably Kesh as well himself. They spend a lot of their lives working, a lot of their lives working on a shoestring budget in their garden shed, pissing off their wives, oh, pissing off their wives and family in order to develop their thing for nothing. And if someone comes and offers them a mouse, fast amount of money, I can hear somebody talking. Oh, no, the music's come back again. Someone just said something and then switched off. <laughs> um, anyway, I've got to go to work soon, so I hope this starts before I go to work. <clears throat> but um, anyway, all waiting, all waiting to see what happens now. All just hanging, hanging on. There's lots of people in the chat box just hanging on, saying, "Oh, what's going on here?" So someone, someone's got about 4:15 a.m. in Texas. My goodness, 2:15 a.m. Los Angeles. Uh, some 7.16 Australia, oh, people all over the world. 
I'll put here 9.15 UK. Hmm. Hurry up. Got to go to work soon. Hurry up, I've got to go to work soon. I have. Um, someone says here, for all sceptics, please leave and let us enjoy the learning. Thank you. We will teach you how to do this once we've run... Oh, are we ready? Something's happening. The third camera's going up. We are now... Um, it just says live, but it's uh, been running basically for about ten minutes. <coughs> it's, the, it's the usual thing when it comes to live streaming. You always get some technical problem. Um, when I went to Dr Stephen Greer the other week, which I talked about in a previous video, Someone I know said, oh, I'm not going to bother, I'll just watch the live stream. And you, you pay 38 quid for the bloody live stream. And I said, come off it, you know it's going to break down. And it always does. These live streams always bloody break down, don't they? Um, so nothing's happening at the moment, but um, just wait and see what happens. Anyway, I'll uh, get back to you in a sec. Well, it's now uh, 22 minutes past nine. The thing's been going for about a quarter of an hour or so. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't give you the time codes exactly because it's live. I've got a feeling at this rate I'm going to have to go go off to work, and um, I'll just have to watch this on. I'll watch, watch the rest of it on recording, which is a shame if it really is history being made. But I'm not going to. I mean, I'm self-employed. I'm not going to. I can't. I can't pull sickies and things like that like I used to when I was a porter. Occasionally, well, twice, once, a few times. Um, so I'm, I'm not missing a day's work for this um, because I am dubious. Um, if it turns out, see, if this turns out to be real, what's 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 it mean? Because um, well, this has happened before, all right, where free energy technology been announced. No one can find anything wrong with it. Firstly, what happens is this happened in Italy a couple of years ago. It's happened in Japan with cold fusion. Now I've talked about cold fusion before. I'll put links in the description box to previous videos I did about cold fusion and about <coughs> Martin Fleischmann dying and they just set up the last computers and everything, last cameras there's people here from Belarus, from Australia, from Copenhagen, from Milton Keynes even um, you have, you have several from the UK, there's 554 people watching well there'll be 553 in a minute I can tell you um, a couple of people, what's that? What's my alarm clock? Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry, it's my alarm clock. Yeah, I was going to wake up. See, I, this is when I have to wake up. Most mornings I start earlier than this, so um, it's lucky anyway. But um, someone's here from York in the UK. Anyway, as I was saying, um, the, um, <coughs> this has happened several times before. Um, where free energy has been announced, whether it's coal fusion or water powered device or um, an anti gravity device, this this goes back a long way. It goes back to the days of perpet you know perpetual motion mechanics even, where um, it'll be announced. There'll be a bit of a media storm. No one will be able to find anything wrong with it. The skeptics will have a go at it as they always do. No one will be able to find anything wrong with it. But over the course of the few weeks later, it'll gradually slip away from the news. And people will just stop talking about it. It'll kind of drift away, you know, a bit like um, several other, like Osama bin Laden did after the after they went into Afghanistan. He just sort of drifted away because it wasn't needed anymore. But this is different. This is a different kind of drifting away. The Ebola scare did that. Do you remember? It sort of like just drifted away. But anyway, that's not a good analogy because it's not actually what we're talking about here. Um, this is something different with the, the drifting away. <coughs> um, what will happen is obviously the, the, the methods I've just described will be used. For instance, some government authority or university or company or um, engineering company, industry in industry, will approach you with an offer you can't refuse. You know, you'll think, oh wow, <laughs> these people are really nice. These governments aren't really against free energy. I mean, all these conspiracy theorists were wrong. The governments are quite open to the idea of free energy. And I'm the clever guy who thought of it first. All the others were fakes. That's what they weren't really suppressed. It was fake. I'm the real. I'm the real deal. I am. I've been the first to discover free energy. I'll sign on the dotted line right here. Thank you. Here's my million pounds. I'll go and buy my yacht. Um, now that um, 
that is, is how they trick you. This is why, this is, I think, Keshi has been saying this. Keshi, he says he's been working with a Western government, with academic institutions, with engineers. I mean, mm, not, a good, not a good idea, I think. Um, it's, it makes it sound like he's already been compromised in that case. That's why I'm dubious. And maybe this is some kind of fake. Now, I came across this website here. Sorry, they're muttering in my ear still. It's called Physics Stack Exchange. And it says here, is Takeshi technology for real? And it says here, the claims in this video, are to not this video, one previously, are totally absurd from the viewpoint of science. It's enough to listen to about 70 seconds to be sure that the narrator doesn't have the slightest clue about physics and the remaining 302 seconds to make that fact even more evident. Um, well, can't create, well, firstly, that is interesting because I first got that impression when he starts talking about hydrogen and he talks about anti-gravity. He starts talking about something that sounds like a water-powered device, like a Mayer cell, which runs off hydrogen, which is created through a, an over-unity effect. Then he moves on to anti-gravity. Well, the two are very different. And then he says this is here. First of all, one can't create free energy out of nothing as it violates energy conservation law. Well, I've talked about that before and that's not true. Okay, I'm not a physicist, but I, I do say that's not true. I maintain that's not true. So they're muttering my ears at the moment. Um, and it just goes on to talk about how free energy is simply not true anyway. And honestly, I mean, if it, if it wasn't for the fact that it, it, this thing about hydrogen and anti-gravity, I think I believe that... I think that's the reason I, I, I tend to think maybe this is just a fraud. As well as the fact that this guy seems to think he's the messiah. So uh, there's lots of discussion on this physicsstackexchange.com all about this. Now where is the video? That's still, see, it's still not really going now. It's live, but it's not running. 611 people watching. Nothing's happening yet. It's just people, it's just people muttering in the background. Um, now, one particular instance happened. Oh, he just put up, um, thank you for your patience, where is it? Thank you for your patience, we'll be, we, we are just testing and setting up. Why don't they do that beforehand? Typical live stream. Oh, we have, we have a screen now where there's a cursor going across. Someone's just come from Italy, someone's speaking Italian, Netherlands. It's just uh, interesting, at the end of this week, on, the, on Halloween, is the, it's, the break, it's the Breakthrough Energy Movement Conference in Texas. Was, and, oh, Se Secret Space Programme and Breakthrough Energy Movement Conferences are both going to happen at the end of the week on Halloween, which is a Saturday this year. Oh, oh, look at this. One planet, one race, one nation. Third World Ambassadors Meeting for Peace. Well, that sounds a little bit, uh, sounds a bit Lucha's Trust, that. I don't like that at all. When are you going to start? I think that, that's Keshi. I can hear Keshi. I recognise his voice. When are you going to start, he says. Now, a few years ago, in fact, when I was on the old David Icke forum, when I was just starting off with Hapanwo, and I wrote about this in my very earliest articles on Hapanwo. An Irish company called Steorn, S-T-E-O-R-N, came up with, hang on, end war, end hunger, came up with this thing called the Orbo machine. And there was a lot of fuss about it. I mean, they, they, they posted on the David Icke forum lots of stuff about it. And um, then they just went quiet. You know, there was a big fuss. I mean, people, they had their own forum, which I joined. And they eventually had a, a big, they decided to put it to test, they decided to sign a contract with a, an engineering, um, te engineering a scientific um, consultancy firm, which tested it and said it didn't work. It's now been denounced as, oh, here's the YouTube, here's the, Victor, here's the um, Wikipedia thing about it. Talking about various demonstrations of the steel on Orbo machine, and about how it didn't work. Now, I don't believe everything I read on Wikipedia, don't worry about that, but um, 
I'm not saying the Orbo machine doesn't, didn't work, but again, this is another example of a lot of fuss being made over a free energy device that doesn't work, ends up just drifting away, being forgotten about. Um, skeptics have a go at it. No, one, you know, it's tested, and there's a, some people say it doesn't work, other people say it don't, and then it's just sort of like it's forgotten about. Oh, they they rely on the human ability to sort of selectively forget. I think. I hope this doesn't happen again. Uh, happen again. I don't want to sound defeatist. Okay, so listen, something's going on. Oh, here we go. New, a new technology environment of science. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you later. I'm just going to listen to what this guy's saying now. Okay, um, Kesh, this is Mr. Kesh, or Dr. Kesh, Professor Kesh, whatever he's called. At the moment, he's actually describing how the machine works. And it looks very much like, it looks very much like a variously electrical based um, free energy device where you, you plug it you actually plug it into the mains and it has uh, various it has various diodes and resistors there's a diode there and um, he's done some other diagrams I can't follow it all you need to I think you need to be very keen on good on electrics to actually understand everything he's saying but basically the principle is that the input power is fed back it's fed back to it's fed back at the end of the of the of the powertrain. It's fed back to the input again, and that you will have a you have you'll have an over unity. You'll have an you have an energy profit at the end. So more is fed back than is put in, which means after a couple of after a couple of circuits, the device becomes energy independent. That's what he's explaining. There's a lot of in the chat box. There's lots of. There's some people who've been quite abusive. There's people saying, um, "Show us the blueprint, con man, things like that." They, they, these co these um, comments are running really, really quickly. Um, this is 630 people watching at the moment. Um, lots of foreign languages, things like that, and. Um, some people, some skeptics saying, just shut up and show us the blueprints and things like that. Um, maybe we'll get more details later on, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go soon and um, I'm going to have to just watch the, I'll watch the recording when I get back. I don't have much to do today, so hopefully we'll be back by mid-afternoon. And there's another session at 2pm or 1pm or something like that, which I'll miss, I'll also miss that. So, um... Well, that's, that's life. I mean, not everyone can sort of like watch these things live. I mean, all of us have, uh, um, we all have livings to earn, don't we? So uh, well, let's watch for a bit more and I'll let you know when I'm heading off. Well, he's explaining at the moment that he's going to give out some of these machines to certain people. He says he's not going to charge any money for them, he's going to give them out. That there is the machine. Let me just zoom in. So I don't have any screen cap software right now, but that blue thing there is the machine. Okay. That thing there is the machine. It's called, it says Magrav Power on it. It's plugged into that main socket there. And, um,. He's just talking about how it works. He says, we've been misusing copper wire. I think there's some kind of field effect from the wire. Hmm. Oh dear. So, uh, I think that might be the anti-gravity thing he's talking about. Um... Remains to be seen what happens. There's a lot of cynicism in the chat box. A lot of people saying, um, there's skeptics saying, oh, it's all a big fraud. He won't show us the blueprints. And then there's people like me saying, look, the government are going to shut this down. You know, this guy's not with it. He's not, um, he's not wary enough. Which is probably true. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't think he is. If he's, for all we know, he's already controlled opposition. Now, I'm not, I'm not, 
one of these people who calls everything controlled opposition. I'm not like that. But we have to be wary of these things. We have to be wary and to say um, that if this is going to be such a... Oh, it's frozen again. Such a high-profile media presentation, then we've got to wonder, I mean, what's going to happen? I mean, surely if it was for real, there'd be people watching it waiting to pounce in lots of many, many ways. I really wish it was true, but the more he talks, the more I think it's bullshit. And if it were true, he would have shown it working by now. They want to see the machine work. Uh, 630 people, one people watching. Oh, I'm going to have to go in a minute. He's now talking about black entities on the copper wire. Um, he says this is a deposit of plasma. Sounds very much like the black goo that Miles Johnston talks about. When he, uh, he says that when he worked at a pirate radio station in Ireland, um, he found strange black substances in the electrical um, systems of the radio station. I don't know if there's a connection here, but I just thought I'd... It's an, it's an interesting correlation. He's now explaining how he uses words like nano a lot. I don't understand everything he's saying because I'm not trained, I'm not an engineer. But he's talking about superconductivity and plasma. Right, I'm going, I've got to go to work and uh, we'll catch up with this later. Okay, I just got home from work. I'm just listening to uh, Dr. Keshi again. The same video is still in progress. It's now 3 p.m. Dr. Keshi is still talking, and um, it's interesting actually because he's um, he's talking about uh, about oil, and he's talking about um, how oil is abiotic. And this is um, he says oil will never run out because it doesn't come from it's not a fossil fuel. Now this is something that Ian R. Crane has talked about, and several other people. The idea that oil might not be a fossil fuel. Um, the idea that oil is a fossil fuel goes back to this guy called Nikolai Lomonosov sometime in the 17th century. And um, it's a, an assumption nowadays. And some oil companies are now un understand that it's not a fossil fuel because it, is, it, it does replenish itself. Oil wells you, if, will actually regain pressure if you leave them alone for a while. Um, Ian R. Crane has talked about this, about how in Russia especially, oil companies um, will go away. It's, it's almost an open secret in the oil industry in Russia. They'll go away, they'll leave an oil f field for an oil well, they'll just leave it. When, it, when, it's, when they're no longer getting any oil out of it, they'll leave it alone for about 10 or 20 years, they'll go back to it, and pressure will be restored, and they'll be able to get more oil out of it. Now this may be one of the secrets that Putin is keeping, his, 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 the ace up his sleeve in this war against him and his country, which is going on at the moment. Sorry about the noise, that's the toilet upstairs, it's a noisy bastard he is. Um, because as you know, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, if, you, if you're looking into the conspiracy, conspiracy sphere at the moment, there's a war going on against Russia. Not a, not a shooting war, there's, a, there's plenty of other ways of waging war against the nation without um, shooting it with guns and bullets and planes. Um, what they're doing is they're waging war economically. They're trying to sabotage the Russian economy. They, uh, this is, which is why the oil price has crashed over the last couple of years. It's because it's, it's an attempt to bring Russia down. I've written about this in, in, in blog articles on Hapanwo Voice and Hapanwo. I think I may have mentioned this in previous films um, on this channel. Now, Putin, this is why Putin, the reason I think Putin has attacked ISIS is it's, it's a way of getting back at them, at the, at the West. This is why he's been flying his aircraft along the English Channel and, and parking his submarines in, in, in harbours in Scotland. It is, it is a way of getting his way, almost like um, trying to strike back. He's attacking ISIS, because he knows as well as you and I do that ISIS is a creation of the Mossad CIA Western Intelligence Services. Uh, they don't get those new Toyota trucks. They, they don't commandeer those brand new Toyota trucks with machine gun turrets built in from local showrooms, no. Um, so, um, it could be that's the ace up Putin's sleeve. And Keshi seems to know about this, which I think is remarkable because, I mean, I'll have to say more about this. Um, this video, I mean, this is, this is the first day of a whole series of 
he's doing he's doing lectures like this every day this week um, and this is the same video that was playing earlier I might go back and look through some of the recordings to see if there was anything worth saying because I, I couldn't understand all the electrical engineering details of what you were talking earlier on. Richard D. Hall and other electrical engineers would understand that. Um, I, I don't understand all the details. I know the basics, but I don't understand the details. Um, he, um, it's amazing that he understands this because and I'll say more about this later. Dr. Keshe is... He's conspiratorially blind. He understands that oil is not a fossil fuel. Yet he still seems... He can't understand how secret that big has been kept. Yet he doesn't really... He doesn't really understand that free energy itself is a secret that's been kept. Which I think is... Can you see here? I don't know how much you can see. Um, which I think is, is, is baffling, it's a baffling contradiction. Which is why I'm... The more I see of this, the more dubious I feel about it. Well, I think he's coming to the end now. Um, he's talking about... He said some interesting things, which I'll go into in a minute. But um, nothing in the news about any free energy. We've got five whale watchers dying in Canada. Um, Process meat cause cancer, etc., etc. What doesn't cause cancer nowadays? Um, he said, um, "You, this day, November the twenty sixth, twenty fifteen, will will go down in history as the day when you were freed from the shackles of conventional energy." Now, um, we haven't been freed from the shackles of conventional energy yet. This is this is what I mean by say that he's conspiratorially blind. I think it's going to take a lot more than that. I think it's a lot more has to go. There's a lot more has to go through before what he realizes can come true. <clears throat> I've said this before. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, the people in the the people in the chat box have said things like, "Oh, um, the the corporations are doomed and things like this." I don't know. I don't think so. I really don't. We'll see what happens at the end of it anyway. Um, I think he's building, uh, Dr. Cash is building up to the end of his uh, speech now. And he's been going all day. I wonder how many people have really watched the whole thing? I don't know. I mean, those, those who could understand the, the engineering side of it, maybe. Um, it'll be available as a recording, obviously. Um, but, I mean, obviously people have to go out and work. So, like me. But, um... I'd love to be proved wrong, I really would. Then I'll say more about this at the end. And here we can see that the Secret Space Program Conference is taking place on October 31st, that's Halloween, and the 1st of no November, Austin, Texas. Connecting the dots with Linda Moulton Howe, Catherine Austin Fitz, Joseph P. Farrell, Jim Mars, and many others. I know Miles is going to that, and I don't know if Andrew Johnson is going. But that is the conference I was talking about. Um, I, I made a mistake about the Breakthrough Energy Movement. That's already been. It took place on October the 10th and 12th. 10th to, 10th to the 12th. So um, I'd like to have gone to all these conferences. Obviously I can't go to all of them, if any of them. Um, let's see what we've got here. The program looks good. Um, yeah, we've got um, Joseph P. Farrell, Walter Bosley. Paul Laviolette, Jim Mars, um, Olaf, Linda Moulton Howe, Catherine Osimitz, and another Joe, Joseph P. Farrell. Yeah, if you can get to this, please do go. Yeah, so I've got Ketchy on the background, still playing. Um, he's nearly finished now. But I do wonder if... Um, is it a coincidence that Keshi has, has done this conference, or Keshi, or whatever he's called, has done his own conference, his own live webinar. When these conferences are on. The Breakthrough Energy Moment, a couple of weeks ago. And this one now, Secret Space Program Conference. Which is coming up this weekend. Basically the day after he has finished, this is going to come up. Because the free energy device, of course, the free energy issue comes up in both of these events. 
Well, um, Dr. Keshi is almost finished now. I'm gonna. I'll watch a recording and go through and try and find some highlights. I'll probably do a part two to this video. This is why I called this video Day One. Because I think there's going to be more probably to say about it later. But I want to get um, my initial thoughts up online for you guys to see. Just in case this is history in the making. Now, as I said, there's nothing in the news. That's to be expected. Um, Dr. Keshi is very, very... He's very, very confident about what he's doing. There's a lot of people, obviously, he has a lot of followers. There are currently 800 people watching that video live. A lot of the people in the Cheatney, in the comments box, on the YouTube comments box, there's like a live comments box beside the video. It's not like the ones underneath. <clears throat> it's like a chat room, you know? There, it was obviously very confident. I'd love to be confident too. I'd love to think that this was history being made, but... As I said, I, I think I was a bit unfair to Dr. Cashier just before when I said he was conspiratorially blind because then he said something interesting. He said that getting this out the way he's doing it means the government can't suppress it. So he's aware of government suppression. So maybe he's not conspiratorially blind, but he is. Um, he doesn't have conspiratorial 2020 vision. I think he obviously needs uh, some conspiracy bifocals, shall we say. He's partially sighted. <laughs> in the conspiratorial terms. Um, a lot of these people who get involved in free energy, as I said earlier, they they don't always understand what they're getting involved in. They 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 hand their their project, they they, they try and publicise their project for the normal channels, getting a patent for it, looking for development looking for developers, people who will invest money. And as I explained earlier, that's how they lose things. There's also a question mark over some of the alternative um, people in the alternative communities. Well, I'd say, um, as I said, how can I say this without without going too far? If I had a free energy invention, Dr. Stephen Greer wouldn't be my first port of call. If I wanted to look for someone I felt I could trust to deal with it. The thing is that um, the issue is so much deeper than even I can imagine. And I can imagine quite a bit. And I don't think a lot of the people who get involved in this really understand what... what it's not just... They, they know and understand what free energy is. They understand whether they're extracting energy from the zero point field, uh, from the uh, electrical energy of the Earth's atmosphere. Anything like that, they, they understand. They understand about generation costs. I mean, they'll say, well, uh, wind power is technically free energy, isn't it? Solar power is free energy. No one pays for the sun. Yes, but this is something entirely different. This is um, energy a lot much more efficient and much more um, fertile and abundant source of energy that can be extracted with much less fuss. It's much more practical. The government don't mind us using solar and wind power because... It can never be. It can never replace the, the system they have now. It can never be so efficient that the, you know, the, you, they will. It'll essentially free us up. Because this is about. It's, it's the political side of energy. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, I don't want to repeat myself. I mean, you, there's links in the description box to all my previous videos on this subject. If you're a regular viewer, you'll already have seen them. I mean, I recommend energy politics and UFOs. I recommend uh, my nuclear fusion power video. <clears throat> Um, which goes into this in detail. Um, but what um, a lot of these more naive people in the comments box are saying is that we are essentially about to be able to go up to the chairman of Royal Dutch Shell and say to him, sorry, your services are no longer required. It, it'll be okay, I promise you. Um, you, um, you, can, you can make candles. You still need oil to make candles. Think about that, hey? Shell candles! They're pretty colours, they're all kinds of nice shapes. They smell nice, they don't stain your wallpaper. That'll be a big earner, that will. Shell candles. It's not, that you, it's not like that. I mean, the whole issue, like the issue with the... with the. If you saw my video about... Oh, I can't put all these links in the description box, but... My video about chip fat fuel, okay? It's, it's, it's an interesting... They... they the people who use chip fat and get prosecuted for, for fueling their diesel diesel cars 
are essentially being prosecuted for not paying tax on a product that they have not bought. And in any other circumstances, that would be regarded as ludicrous and, and a travesty. Yet because it's fuel, it's different. Fuel is, an, is energy, is the... It is the lifeblood and the foundation of civilization, and the Illuminati have built up a civilization in a particular image, an image which they will want to preserve. They won't want it changed. They don't want any different. They don't want any lifeblood transfusions. They don't want new foundations being built underneath it, unless it's some that some that they can they can use for the same purpose as they are now. And I honestly cannot see how that is possible. I honestly can't see how a world in which free energy is freely available. I don't see how the New World Order could possibly be built in that kind of world. Because we'd be looking at a world without poverty. We'd be looking at a world where everyone has enough to eat. Everyone has um, enough water to drink. Wherever you are in the world. It would essentially... Essentially there would be... There would be, be an end to the environmental destruction. Um, the, the, the amount of effort they put into to the campaign to make us afraid of climate change. That will all go. The wars for oil would all go. Now people say it's about money. On one level it is. There are people, there are an out, there is an outer party, maybe people like the chairman of Royal Dutch Shell, people within the oil companies, high up, who know free energy exists and suppress it because of simple selfish reasons. It's about money. It's about the fact that they'd be put out of business permanently. Their entire industry, the most lucrative industry on earth. In fact, it's not just an, it's not just a industry, it is industry. That will be that will disappear overnight, or within a few years. Um, those people are just they're just scared. They think, well, what will happen? I won't be I won't have my rich important job anymore. They're thinking in those terms. But above them, there's an inner party of people who are the true keepers of the secret, and they and they're keeping it for the reasons, the real reasons. It's not about money. It's about politics. It's about control. It's about keeping the world in the image they want it in. I mean, it's only when you start, you have to think carefully for, for a long time. You can't understand this just off the top of your head. You have to think carefully for a long time about what changes the, the, the advent of free energy would bring to the world. And I'm having to think about this because I'm writing my book Aurora at the moment, a novel of disclosure, which I've talked about on previous films. That's that's having to come. I've got I've got to contemplate that because it's obviously going to be a plot device in the book. To begin with, the current world order would 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 change overnight. Oh, it would change very quickly within a few years, as I said. There's no such thing as overnight, but within a few years, um, the difference between the West and the Third World would break down because. Everyone, I think every, the, improved, the quality of life of everybody would be improved, apart from those who do run the oil company who would lose their fortunes, of course. Everybody else's life would be improved enormously. There would essentially be no difference between the West and the Third World. Um, because as I explained in the previous video, just take Sudan, a dust bowl. I live with some guys from the Sudan. They're, they're living in this country because they want to earn a decent living. I don't blame them. I'm not angry with them for that. Um, I don't judge them for that. Um, I, I did a little back of an envelope calculation and I worked out that just a handful of mayor cells, maybe 12, would transform the Sudan from a dust bowl into a land flowing with milk and honey. Think of all, the, once you desalinate seawater and ir start irrigating the land, once, and there's other things like things like Terra Preta, which is a very, very, very powerful fertiliser. It's an organic, um, non-toxic fertiliser, which increases the yield of farm farmland tenfold. Um, you know, you could generate electricity and, and provide infrastructure and things like that. Um, that could happen everywhere in the world. There would be literally, there'd be no reason for anyone to be poor. And even without free energy, I mean, we know that a lot of poverty is engineered anyway through debt, through artificial debt, third world debt, etc. Take away, you know, just imagine if you take took away the, not only the third world debt, but you took away, you actually gave all those people as much energy as they wanted. The, Im I mean, there'd be none no, the immigration crisis, which is another thing which I've talked about before, which is being engineered deliberately as part of this ploy for a new world order. That would be over because nobody would, would want to leave their countries and come here. They're only coming here for economic reasons. 
Do you think they're coming to Britain for the weather? Come off it. Come off it. That would be over. In fact, I've, as I said in a previous film, that, um, there could be a reverse immigration crisis by people like me in cold, temperate countries. We want our place in the sun. We want to get ourselves a beach villa in, in Somalia, you know, and then the Somali people would have, they'd have a crisis with us moving there. <laughs> It'd be a reverse. Um, <clears throat> so, no, there's no... Um, that would all be over. And, of course, the immigrant crisis is, in fact, a vital part of the New World Order. Um... The, 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 the arrangement of superpowers we have in the world today, I mean, we still got, we, it's, the world's changed in the last few years. The Cold War ended, the Soviet Union disappeared, the uh, United States has declined, as a, did, never became the global superpower that um, the Project for the New American Century people wanted it to do now. It's now one of an, a community of very powerful countries, which the BRICS countries, is, was it Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, it's, it's part of a community of, you know, seven or eight very powerful nations now. Um, but I mean, take away the take away the petrodollar, take away the petroleum stranglehold on the earth. As, as Dr. Keshi quite rightly points out, it, it is a stranglehold, and you take that away, India and China would dominate the world with their enormous populations, their huge resources. Um, in the case of the Chinese people, a phenomenal level of intelligence too. I mean, they're the, they're the most they're the brightest people in the world by IQ. I mean, they would take over the world. Something I think it may be planned anyway by the Illuminati, but it would be the wrong kind of takeover for that for them. We would, and and see that's that would, that's just an example of how the world order would transform. Um, we're talking about an end to environmental destruction, all of it. And I'm not talking about imaginary environmental, environmental destruction like climate change, which is made up. I'm talking about real environmental destruction, pollution, radioactive waste, um, deforestation, soil depletion, water depletion, um, rubbish being tipped in the sea, that, you know, the, the, the destruction of life in the oceans. You know, 50% of all the biomass of the oceans has disappeared in the last 45 years. Did you know that? That's real. And people, people worry about carbon emissions when, when three quarters of all the tuna have died and all these other creatures are dying. People say, oh, we've got to get, we've got to get these new light bulbs. Hell, oh, hell's teeth. These people annoy me so much. Um, that's an end to environmental destruction, environmental destruction because, uh, firstly, resources could be created firstly through once you have control of water and you have uh, you can access you can get fresh drinking water and irrigation water from the oceans you have an infinite supply of resources you can grow including things like hemp for plastics um and you know you it would transform you would have all these synthetics you could create you would have uh, all the food you needed, as I said, all the water you needed. Um, you could have your flying car. I mean, this, this is a thing. Keshi has these pictures of flying cars everywhere. You know, I mean, um, that'd be great, wouldn't it? We just That's right, no need for traffic jams, no need for road tax. No, you're just flying your car. And this is funny, because the sceptics always say this, don't they? So I am repeating myself. I, I've been through some of these points in previous films, but the sceptics always say... <coughs> um, Free energy can't possibly exist. If it did, the government would leap on it. The person who invented it would get a Nobel Prize. And they'd make a fortune. Just think how much earning they could earn just selling the energy. Don't you get it, sceptics? You just do not understand energy politics at all. You can't sell free energy. You can't sell this kind of... You can't go to somebody and say, give me some money, I'll give you some of my free energy. I mean, Keshi, he's, he's, he says he's distributing his... The, the blueprint for his um, his Magrab machine free. I mean, fair enough. Even if he did sell it for a few quid, which I suppose he'd be entitled to do, it's... the sceptics don't understand this. But it's like they're saying that you can go up to the skipper of a sailing ship, attach an amomometer to his mast, connected to a meter, and charge him for the wind he uses. It's 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 a non it's a nonsense. It's an oxymoron. It's it's a, it's illogical. So, big sceptic fail there. And then, of course, there's the 
the fact of the cover-up itself. The fact that um, it was covered up. I mean, this is another word. This ties in with the UFO thing, because the UFO issue is intimately connected with that of energy because of the back engineering of or some of this technology back was back engineered from crash flying saucers. Not all of it, because it seems that human inventors have discovered it as well. Maybe Keshi's one of them. But there's others going back to Nikola Tesla. Even before Tesla, there was there was others who discovered this. Either way, I mean, the government are going to have to say they can they covered it up. They're going to have to admit they covered it up. And this is in a world in which. People go berserk if an MP puts a duck bond in their garden. The political structures of the world, the conventional political structures of the world, do they have the capacity to absorb an impact of this magnitude, a revelation of such extreme, of, of such extreme changeability? I mean, can, can they? Can Obama or Cameron literally sit in front of us and say, uh, you see my Obama video, the one, the, the controversial one, you know, the one where I was accused of being racist falsely. Um, and it, it's an example of what I'm saying. Um, by the way, um, if, if Hillary wins the presidency, I'll, I'll, do, I'll remake it in drag. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it's an example of what I'm talking about. They're going to have to say, look, we, we covered it up. We, we have free energy. We've known about it for a long time. We've known about it for over a century now, you know. And we didn't tell you. We thought we'd keep it from you. We kind of forgot to tell you. You know, I know there's been how many a billion or more people have died. Um, wars for oil, environmental destruction, deforestation. Yes, we know that happened, but we we still didn't tell you. Um, I know it was a terrible oversight, but we forgot to tell you. You know, but um, oh, well, we didn't forget to tell you. We, all right, I, I admit it. We did keep it from you deliberately, but we did it. For, it was for your own good. Oh, well, actually, it wasn't for your own good, was it? It was for our good. It was to. It was a great detriment to you. I know we, we've killed all these. We, we essentially, you know, there's blood on our hands from all these people who died and from all the whales that were killed in the sea and everything. And I know, but yeah, we'll make it up to you. I promise. We'll bring back school milk. It's just not. Poss it's just not feasible. Disclosure. Of whether whether you're talking about extraterrestrials, life, extraterrestrial UFOs, or free energy, because the two will go together, I don't see how willing disclosure can happen. This is why I think Keshi. Something's going to happen with Keshi. I'll keep an eye on this. All right. If Keshi's for real and it hasn't already happened, something's going to happen to compromise him. He's going to he's going to a lorry's going to sidewall him tonight when he's driving home. Something like that. Or we'll have a heart attack in bed. Unless I'm wrong. Unless I'm wrong and all this is possible, in which case we are witnessing the change of history. And we're witnessing this this has to mean the end of the New World Order. Once you once once the free energy's out, that's it, it's over. As I said, I don't believe the New World Order is possible with free energy. The the control and rationing and scarcity of energy, or perceived scarcity of energy, is quintessential to the political classes of this world. And their their state and their position and their existence, their very existence is dependent on the, the perceived scarcity of various resources, as resources and especially energy, because as I said, energy and resources go together. Watch the watch the films in the description box for more details. All right, because I, I go into I go into everything I've just said in meticulous detail. Um, I probably I might well make another film about this. I'm going to carry on watching Keshia throughout the week as much as I can. I can't watch everything he's doing because of other things. I should I know I should have looked into him some more, but you know the the problem is there's so much out there, isn't there? I mean I I, I heard about Keshia. I, like I said I even wrote to him asking him for an interview on the Panama Radio, and he never got back to me. The thing about it is um, there's so much out there that it's actually not possible to to study everything. So obviously I haven't looked into Keshi in, in detail before. So um, I, mean, I will do so now. If certainly, if this story grows legs and carries on, I certainly will look into it in detail. So I'm going to leave it there for now, and um, there'll be more details to come, probably on this in on this um, event. 
I'm sure there'll be some more news, if not mainstream news. If this does go, if this does come out right, if it's surreal, remember you heard it first here on her Panwo TV. All right, my my place in history is assured. <laughs> Um, but I've got a feeling it's going to go quiet, just like the others did. There's been other free energy breakthroughs that have been announced and they've gone quiet. The most, most notably was the coal fusion one, which I've talked about in, in the films in the description box. Where it was suddenly, it suddenly was headlines and then the next day it was all forgotten, it was covered up, it was suppressed. I mean, there's a film called uh, Heavy Watergate, which it was deliberately shut down. That whole investigation was shut down. And um, the only way, the only way that this cycle of suppression and partial partial disclosure and suppression can be broken, is when people come become aware of the stakes involved, and they they learn the tricks of the enemy, and they learn to outmaneuver them, and that is what I hope is going to happen this week. I don't know. Hopefully, Mr. Dr. Keshi will have learned those lessons. Um, it doesn't look like he has, to be honest. If not, hopefully, enough other people will do. So that this does not just go the same way as coal fusion. But we shall see. Until the next point of interest in this saga, hospital porters, pride and dignity, stop the new world order.